Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel. Welcome to bonus weather video number two for this week. This is the makeup for the one that I missed yesterday because of my technical issues. And uh, today we're going to give you an update on the El Nino, how it is progressing and what it may, what it may mean for the upcoming winter. I emphasize the word may there. All right, let us go on ahead and take a look at these Oceanic Nino Index Values. Now to refresh your memory, and I'll take myself out of the picture here so you can see the entire chart. Uh, if these numbers are 0.5 or higher, plus 0.5 or higher, it's an El Nino. Minus 0.5 or lower is a La Nina. And then there are various intensities of the El Nino. If it's 0.5 to 0.9, that's weak. If it's 1 to 1.4, it's moderate. If it's 1.5 to 1.9, it's strong. And if it's 2 or higher, then it is very strong. Now, for the last three winters, we have actually been in a La Nina. It started in late 2020 and continued all the way into the beginning portions of this year. But since January, all of that has changed. And we saw a 0.3 increase here, 0.3 here, 0.3 here, 0.3 here, 0.3 here, 0.3 here. Now, this uh, particular update, and by the way, if you haven't seen this before, these are three-month periods. So every time you move up along the chart here, two of these three months overlap. And you have to have five uh, overlapping three-month periods in succession to qualify it as an official El Nino. And that's why you don't see the red colors down in here, because we've got to have five consecutive months of 0.5 or higher. We've got four. So assuming that we don't see these numbers collapse, uh, in the month of October, and then all those numbers will turn red when I give you the next, next update in the beginning of November. So that's how all of that works. But all the prior uh, time periods have gone up by 0.3, this one only 0.2. So we may be beginning to see uh, this uh, El Nino level off in intensity just a little bit. Here are the sea surface temperature anomalies. In other words, the water temperatures compared to normal. And you can see the really strong positive anomalies here in the western coast of South America. And then they are still strong, but they weaken as you head westward across the equator in the uh, equatorial Pacific. And, uh, and again, the main reason for this is that normally uh, you have trade winds that blow from east to west, and they keep all the really warm water out here in the western Pacific. But periodically, those trade winds weaken and allow warm water to spread farther east. And so that's what an El Nino is all about. Now, the Climate Prediction Center, uh, one of the branches of NOAA, uh, issues probabilities for the chance of El Nino for the coming months. And you can see that it has got the chance at 100% through the period November, December, and January, just under 100% through February, about 95% through March, just shy of 90% through April, uh, and then it drops just below 80% March, April, and May. And by April, May, and June, it's down to about 60%. And you can just begin to see a little blue down here. Uh, which indicates a very, very small chance, about a 1% or 2% chance of a La Nina developing by April, May, and June of next year. So right now, at least from a probabilistic standpoint, it's not going for this to be a real long-lasting El Nino, but certainly through the winter, no question. Now, NOAA's winter outlook <clears throat> has the northern tier of the United States above normal. Now, keep in mind that the normal temperatures up there are obviously lower than they are across the southern U.S. So that doesn't mean it's going to be in the 80s up there. It just means that compared to their normals, which are pretty cold, uh, it is likely to be above normal. Now, the rest of the country, you see equal chances. A lot of people misinterpret that as being near normal. That's not the case, okay? Equal chances, and there are basically three categories. You're either below normal, near normal, or above normal. It means that any of those three have equal chances of occurring it basically is saying there's no clear signal as to how the temperatures are going to turn out in that part of the country uh, during the months of December, January, and February. But don't misinterpret equal chances to mean near normal. It could still be extremely warm, it could be extremely cold, or it could be near normal. Any of those three have an equal probability of occurring. Now, in terms of, uh, oh, I should have changed my label there to precipitation, you see above normal in the eastern part of North Carolina, and really the whole state is at least slightly above normal. And this would indicate, as many El Ninos do produce, 
uh, storms coming out of the Gulf of Mexico and then moving up the eastern seaboard. And of course, those are the storms that give us our most interesting winter weather in North Carolina. So there is at least something to be hopeful about there if you are a snow enthusiast. Now, I went back and take, took a look at the records at RDU during moderate El Ninos since 1950, and there have been seven cases, so it's not exactly a huge sample size. <clears throat> but of those seven cases, a 71% chance of a colder than normal December, a 71 chance of a uh, chance of a colder than normal January, a 100% chance of a colder than normal February, and a 43% chance of above normal snowfall for the season. Now, if we get to a strong El Nino, there are only five cases there. And it, interestingly enough, it only shows a 40% chance of colder than normal temperatures in December, but 80% of colder than normal in January and February, and an 80% chance of above normal snowfall for the season. There was one notable exception in the early 1990s when there was no measurable snow at all during a strong El Nino. So it's not a guarantee, but statistically, the odds are in your favor uh, to at least be a little bit above normal. Okie dokie, I believe that is it. And let me put myself back in the picture here. That is the bonus weather video for this Thursday, number two for the week, number three will be coming up tomorrow, and another daily weather update as well. So you all take care, folks. Have a great Thursday evening, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow afternoon. See you later.